Eratosthenes was a Greek mathematician, geographer, poet, astronomer, and music theorist, not to mention the chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria, Egypt. He had heard that in a city to the south of him called Syene, there were no shadows cast at noon on the summer solstice. He wanted to know if this was the same in Alexandria. So he stuck a stick into the ground on June 21st, waited until noon, and it turned out that there was indeed a shadow, measuring roughly seven degrees. Eratosthenes then hired someone to measure the distance from Alexandria to Syene by foot, which is about 800 kilometers. Now, 7.2 degrees, which was the length of the shadow his stick made in Alexandria, is 1 50th of 360 degrees. So 50 times 800 kilometers equals 40,000 kilometers, the correct circumference of planet Earth. Indeed, the ancients knew the Earth was round, including Pythagoras around 500 BC and Aristotle around 350 BC. So why do some claim that the ancients were unaware of the shape of the Earth? The answer may have more to do with economics than with physics. During the Bronze Age, copper was in high demand, and it could be that the ancient Phoenicians wanted to monopolize transatlantic trade routes by spreading rumors that one will fall off the side of the flat earth if they sailed out too far. In Alexandria at that time, there lived a man named Eratosthenes. One of his envious contemporaries called him Beta, the second letter of the Greek alphabet, because he said Eratosthenes was second best in the world in everything. But it seems clear that in many fields, Eratosthenes was alpha. He was an astronomer, historian, geographer, philosopher, poet, theater critic, and mathematician. He was also the chief librarian of the great library of Alexandria. And one day, while reading a papyrus book in the library, he came upon a curious account. Far to the south, he read, at the frontier outpost of Syene, something notable could be seen on the longest day of the year. On June 21st, the shadows of a temple column or a vertical stick would grow shorter as noon approached. And as the hours crept towards midday, the sun's rays would slither down the sides of a deep well, which on other days would remain in shadow. And then, precisely at noon, columns would cast no shadows, and the sun would shine directly down into the water of the well. At that moment, the sun was exactly overhead. Eratosthenes had the presence of mind to experiment, to actually ask whether back here near Alexandria, a stick cast a shadow near noon on June the 21st. And it turns out, sticks do. Eratosthenes asked himself how it could be that at the same moment, a stick in Syene would cast no shadow, and a stick in Alexandria, 800 kilometers to the north, would cast a very definite shadow. Here's a uh, map of ancient Egypt. I've inserted two sticks, or obelisks, one up here in Alexandria, and one down here in Syene. Now, if at a certain moment, each stick casts no shadow, no shadow at all. That's perfectly easy to understand, provided the Earth is flat. If the shadow at Syene is at a certain length, and the shadow at Alexandria is the same length, that also makes sense on a flat Earth. But how could it be, Eratosthenes asked, that at the same instant, there was no shadow at Syene, and a very substantial shadow at Alexandria? The only answer was that the surface of the Earth is curved. Not only that, but the greater the curvature, the bigger the difference in the lengths of the shadows. The sun is so far away that its rays are parallel when they reach the Earth. Sticks at different angles to the sun's rays will cast shadows at different lengths. For the observed difference in the shadow lengths, 
the distance between Alexandria and Syene had to be about seven degrees along the surface of the Earth. By that I mean, if you imagine these sticks extending all the way down to the center of the Earth, they would there intersect at an angle of about seven degrees. Well, seven degrees is something like a 50th of the full circumference of the Earth, 360 degrees. Eratosthenes knew the distance between Alexandria and Syene. He knew it was 800 kilometers. Why? Because he hired a man to pace out the entire distance so that he could perform the calculation I'm talking about. Now, 800 kilometers times 50 is 40,000 kilometers. So that must be the circumference of the Earth. That's how far it is to go once around the Earth. That's the right answer. Eratosthenes' only tools were sticks, eyes, feet, and brains, plus a zest for experiment. With those tools, he correctly deduced the circumference of the Earth to high precision, with an error of only a few percent. That's pretty good figuring for 2,200 years ago. One of the largest copper mines of the Bronze Age was in the United Kingdom, and we know the Phoenicians made it there from the Mediterranean, but could they also have been importing metals from places like Michigan, USA? There are those, even today, who insist that the Earth is flat, but this argument fails to explain how or why cocaine and tobacco, both available only in the New World in ancient times, were found in the bodies of ancient Egyptian mummies. In 1992, a German forensic team makes an extraordinary discovery. Inside seven 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummies, they find what appears to be evidence of a drug not present in Egypt until the late 19th century. Cocaine. The German forensic team begin the microscopic examination of fragile and priceless ancient mummies. They're amazed by what they find. Inside hair and tissue samples, they discover evidence of cocaine. But how did it get there? The mystery begins with the cocoa plant, from which cocaine derives. Found only in South America, the plant is not native to Africa. So how did South American cocaine get into Egyptian mummies? The idea of it appearing in ancient Egyptian mummies is surprising. Examining the Egyptian and South American cultures might help solve this bizarre mystery. Could there be a connection? Both civilizations built pyramids and both mummified their dead. The Egyptians used salts and resins while the natives of Peru allowed their mummies to dry naturally. But were the Peruvians using cocaine 3,000 years ago? Larry Cartmill is a forensic pathologist. He has tested several mummies from Peru. Out of the eight samples, number five we tested was positive. We had no idea that cocaine metabolite would last 1,000 years. And Later on, we found it actually our oldest one we've had is 3,000 years old. If someone could prove the theory of transatlantic travel and back it up with a significant amount of evidence, it would open a big can of worms for the scientific community. The evidence of cocaine found by the forensic team had been ingested into the body through eating or inhalation. These traces then became incorporated into body tissue and hair while alive. Brief contact couldn't produce the same result. Plus, the team had carefully washed their samples to remove any contaminants. How did these drugs end up inside these ancient bodies? The mummies examined by the researchers aren't fake. They've been certified genuine by the museum where they reside. It's unlikely we will ever know the truth of the cocaine mummies. At the end of the day, the scientific community is left with a lot of open-ended questions. 
there's a lot of things that have yet to be answered. While the possibility of a transatlantic seafaring civilization predating Christopher Columbus is still being debated, what is not up for debate is the reality of ancient trade along the Silk Road, from the Mediterranean up to East Asia, where hundreds of 4,000-year-old Aryan mummies continue to be found, as well as massive pyramids, matching those found in Egypt in size and age. It seems the Aryan mummies of Western China, like many of the mummies of ancient Egypt, share more than just common ancestry from northern Iran, but also an affinity for drug use in ancient times. Marijuana plants believed to be more than 2,000 years old were discovered in a tomb in China. A recently published study about the find describes the presence of 13 mostly intact cannabis plants that appear to form a sort of burial shroud. They have been dated to around 2400 to 2800 years ago. According to National Geographic, the underlying skeleton is believed to be that of a 35-year-old adult man with Caucasian features. His remains were found in one grave among about 240 at the Jai Cemetery in an area called Turpan, which used to be popular among Silk Road travelers. Researchers believe the plant's inclusion and placement with the man's corpse were deliberate since the approximately three-foot-long stems extended from his pelvis to his face. Based on this example and evidence at other burial sites in the area, the paper concludes that cannabis was used by the local central Eurasian people for ritual and or medicinal purposes in the first millennium before the Christian era. Tin is an essential metal in the creation of bronzes, and its acquisition was an important part of ancient cultures from the Bronze Age onward. The richest deposits in the world lie in Asia, stretching from Hunan in China to the Malay Peninsula. The Bronze Age, which coincided with China's Xia Dynasty some 4,000 years ago. Now, the development of bronze smelting had a profound social impact. Communities became more settled around copper and tin mines, the two metals that form bronze alloy. Workshops were established where the bronze was fashioned into food vessels and into weapons of war. The emergence of bronze smelting and bronze vessels marked the time in which China entered a great bronze age that was to last more than 1,500 years through the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties. And it was in this period of world civilization that ancient China began to make great advances. The bronze vessels discovered in China are first in the world in terms of quantity and degree of exquisite craftsmanship. The whole valley, the Golden Valley of Bamiyan, is noted for an entire mountain range that was used by the Buddhists as a sacred place in centuries past. And that whole series of mountains there has Buddhist caves in it. Religious priests came here, carved the caves, and when the Muslims came along, many of the caves were destroyed. In fact, the caves were used as residences, and the tar from the fire covered many of the paintings inside, and that sort of saved those paintings. They've been able to remove the tar deposits from the fires of the cent last few centuries, and they have found Buddhist paintings, some of them of great beauty and color, inside the caves. A tremendous Buddhist religious complex in this Bamiyan Valley. We see the red beard and uh, red hair. It's a shame that these figures have all been defaced by people of other faiths at some time in the past. But it's uh, still, it's very easy to see what they looked like and we can tell who they were. He's got the red beard, uh, red hair parted in the middle. The statues that you've seen, the caves themselves, are 1,500 or more years old. Those are bullet holes. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist and author. Please consider purchasing my books available on Amazon. Thank you for sharing. Don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to reading your comments. See you soon.